Assalamu alaikum and hello. Should faith leaders support the government's proposed law to impose the protect duty on places of worship? Why is this presentation important for faith leaders and places of worship? It's clear that the government intends that the new protect duty should apply to all public accessible venues, including places of worship. If the protect duty applies to places of worship, it will have profound and serious impacts on places of worship for years and decades to come, possible positives and also negative consequences on managers and worshippers who attend. The question for faith leaders is this, do you agree or disagree with the government's proposed protect duty being imposed on places of worship? There are four aims of the presentation. Firstly, to explore what the government is proposing by, the, by imposing the protect duty, the focus being on places of worship. I'm going to follow the four themes according to the government consultation document uh, questions and, and issues. Uh, the scope, who will the protect duty apply to, impact what the re requirements are likely to be, support what support will be offered by the government and counterterrorism units, uh, inspection and enforcement, how this may look. Secondly, I'm going to look at what the seven main arguments for the protect duty uh, being imposed on places of worship. Thirdly, what are the 30 main arguments against the protect duty being imposed on places of worship? And then fourthly and finally, what five actions uh, faith leaders should or could take? There are five reasons why the government intends to introduce the protect duty. Uh, the government uh, assesses that public accessible locations continue to be a terrorist target. Uh, you look at the MEN attack or the Finsbury Park attack, for instance. Secondly, uh, there's high profile campaigns, uh, campaign commonly known as the Martin's Law, um, which has called for legal duty on venues to consider security to keep people safe. Uh, thirdly, the government's manifesto commitment was to introduce the protect duty into law. Um, there was meant to be consultation on this uh, topic last year, but the pandemic uh, took uh, priority. Fourthly, the protect duty has been recommended uh, by the MAN inquiry. Fifthly, there appears to be little or no opposition from other political parties and police forces uh, with regards to the proposed protect duty becoming law. So let's look at the government consultation. As a result, the government uh, began a consultation exercise uh, between the 26th of February uh, to the 2nd of July 2021. The government consulted on four main themes, including scope, who and where should the proposed protect duty apply, uh, impact, what should the requirements of the proposed protect duty be on venue managers, support, how should the government support the venues to implement the protect duty and inspection and enforcement how should the proposed protect duty be inspected and enforced against venue managers so let's look at the first theme scope who and where should the proposed protect duty apply the government's proposals move away from protecting small number of specific locations uh, and that was based on the crowd of places strategy to imposing the protect duty to all public accessible places across the uk the government's consultation document proposes three types of locations where the protect duty should apply. Uh, firstly, public venues, which can hold a capacity of 100 people or more. That, for example, entertainment, sports venues, shopping centres. Uh, secondly, uh, large organisations which employ 250 people or more, which operate at a public accessible locations. And that, that could include a petrol station or entertainment chains. And thirdly, public spaces uh, such as public parks, beaches, bridges or town or city squares. The consultation seeks to find out whether these three types of areas are the right scope where the protect duty should apply. The government consultation document makes clear that the protect duty should apply to places of worship and events connected um, and that would include weddings, funerals including at privately owned cemeteries and open air worships. Uh, whilst these haven't been specifically, as I understand, um, mentioned in the government consultation, it, it is implied uh, by that. Uh, this, however, is not a foregone conclusion and places of worship may be exempt from the protect duty if there are significant objections based on compelling reasons. As per the government consultation, there are already proposed exemptions uh, exceptions to the proposed protect duty law and these include private homes, uh, private offices and locations where there is no public access. 
let's look at the second theme impact what should the requirements of the proposed protect duty be on uh, managers locations uh, events where there's uh, public access the government consultation document sets out I, I think four main requirements on managers at venues like places of worship the first is written assess written risk assessments to identify potential terror threats and vulnerabilities to the venue location or space and these could be uh, online or postal attacks including bomb uh, threats and hoaxes uh, physical attacks including loan or group or by a foreign state hostile reconnaissance uh, en route to or from venue location or space the second um, requirement on a, an, on, a, on a manager would be implementation of practical measures to mitigate these threats and these could include lighting fencing cctv use of uh, paid marshals or volunteers uh, regular exercises uh, back searches detection equipments etc thirdly training staff uh, that would be uh, online or face-to-face -face, uh, training uh, from uh, those involved in the counter terrorism unit to identify threats and vulnerabilities and know uh, what to do in certain situations and then there'd be the fourth uh, area uh, and requirement on the on the venue which would be information sharing with the local authority the counter terrorism unit uh, it could be about concerns over instances individuals and sharing uh, best practices uh, the government consultation document refers to reasonable practicable uh, measures to mitigate threats um, it refers to no or low cost at, at uh, some venues particular smaller venues uh, it also suggests that, that one size doesn't fit all venues and events and what measures are implemented would be dependent on the venue and event i think what's reasonable to say is that the larger the event the more significant precautionary measures would be needed to imp be implemented and thus presumably more costs are going to be involved for the place of wor worship and there's an example of uh, that i've given about large prayer meetings in the park when it comes to the third area which is support how uh, does the government or how the government will support venues to implement the protect duty the government consultation document refers to support from various uh, sources and places free training from uh, ctu counter terrorism unit advice and support from a counter terrorism unit a guidance a counter terrorism app a security fund for places of worship although it is cost limited and does not cover certain precautionary measures uh, such as uh, paid marshals and when it comes to the fourth area which is inspection and enforcement i've separated this into um into inspection so how should the proposed duty be inspected and enforced the consultation document refers to inspection overseen by a regulator which could be an existing regulator like the charity commission or the health and safety executive or local authority or the counter terrorism unit police or a new regulator uh, common to any regulator new or existing will be the active involvement of the counter unit police and prevent officers expertise when it comes to enforcement the consultation has not yet settled on enforcement option but when compared with say health and safety and fire safety laws this could include civil actions against the venue managers that could include fat heavy fines removal of uh, and disqualification of trustees directors and managers or closure orders when it comes to uh, criminal uh, proceedings could include criminal convictions against the venue manager and that could be include fines uh, a prison sentence or a, a closure order let me let me now now turn to the uh, area about the seven arguments uh, for the protect duty to be imposed on places of worship and then i'm going to look at the 13 arguments against uh, the protect duty being imposed on places of worship so let's the seven arguments then for the protect duty one the protect duty on place of worship is a necessary and proportionate response to the current and emerging threats uh, worshippers will be safe and feel safer two the protect duty is a logical extension of other duties already imposed on places of worship to keep worshippers safe such as fire safety and health and safety duties on venue managers three the protect duty will create greater certainty of responsibilities and greater effect on the safety of people at these venues four the protect duties being a uh, champion by the counter terms unit who know the threat assessments uh, on places of worship five the number of local and national groups may receive funding in its support approval and promotion of the protect duty six there is little or no opposition to, to the protect duty being imposed on places of worship and seven the government have put into place funding and support for places of worship to reduce any financial and other administrative burdens 
So now let's look at the 13 arguments against the protect duty being imposed on places of worship. One, to keep people safe, the focus should be on intelligence led policing, not a generic protect duty with shortage of counterterrorism funding and capacity to identify and analyze the threats. Uh, you know, and the, the argument goes that, you know, those who do who wish to uh, do harm to us might slip through the net with such a wide net being um, uh, cast over various aspects of counterterrorism. Two, imposing a protect duty on places of worship, especially the inspection and enforcement component, is completely unnecessary and disproportionate response to the current or emerging terror threats. Three, the very idea of the protect duty shifts the blame from the perpetrator to the victims. Four, any response to threats can be met by a voluntary system in place to keep worshippers safe, not to impose the protect duty by law. And you just look at the uh, great work that Places of Worship did during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which was largely based upon uh, um, uh, uh, not imposing law, but by, uh, by, by following uh, government guidance and advice. Five, by imposing the protect duty within the inspection, uh, that is the involvement of counterterrorism unit and enforcement is an unjustified interference by the state in places of worship. Six, with the protect duty, many places of worship may just close its doors or, or stop particular activities that have long benefited uh, people due to the admin and financial burdens and interference of by the regulator and, and in a way that lets the terrorist win. Seven, many places of worship may not welcome the counter-terrorism unit involvement and possibly lead to a chilling effect on what can and can not be expressed in religious teachings. Eight, it may not be clear where the responsibilities lie to impose the protect duty. So for example, when it comes to a funeral, uh, does the protect duty uh, lie with the uh, funeral director, the venue manager or to the local authority? which may own the uh, cemetery. When it comes to open air worship, uh, does the protect duty uh, lie with the organiser or the police or the local authority, which may own the, uh, 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 the council owned land? Nine, many worshippers may be put off from attending places of worship with the degree of securitization of the place of worship and the involvement of counterterrorism units. 10. Faith leaders may feel that this is the thin end of the wedge. Greater involvement of the state may introduce further laws in the future. Uh, for example, uh, Section 7, uh, 26 of the Terrorism Duty. 11. Insurance premiums are, are likely to increase substantially for places of worship. 12. It's unclear and unreasonable. Uh, practical measures may lead to unfair and discriminatory inspections and enforcement. And there's been plenty of examples during the pandemic on places of worship on how local authorities misunderstood the law and guidance and had a different view of what was reasonable as a, as a measure to be put in place uh, during the pandemic to uh, the venue managers. 13. Uh, it's unfair and, and wrong um, and unprecedented uh, to impose the protect duty, especially the inspection enforcement regimes across, across places of worship sector. And there's a long held tradition in the UK that the state does not involve itself in places of worship. So uh, in conclusion, there, there are five actions faith leaders could consider taking um, uh, while the consultation is open or closed. If you're a manager at a place of worship, uh, please read the consultation document for yourself. Uh, raise awareness of the protect duty among your faith communities, its likely impacts and changes that are likely needed to be made. Find out what other faith leaders think about the protect duty, including with those who facilitate the meetings with the government. Uh, what's their position? Um, did, Make your views known in writing to the government and whether the protect duty should apply to places of worship or whether it should be exempt uh, from places of worship. And finally, read the bill. Uh, that's the proposed law uh, when it does eventually come out. And again, make your views known to the government. Thank you for watching this. Uh, to keep updated with any changes in law, uh, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel uh, Greater Manchester Muslim Forum or the YouTube channel uh, Community Legal Education um, where I regularly update um, and, um, uh, and provide updates in relation to uh, uh, legal issues. Uh, to obtain more information on this presentation or training, uh, feel free to contact me. Assalamu alaikum and thank you for watching.